The legend of Okogan began in the 1970s, and there is a lot you should know about his run back then. Ogan is one of the most iconic wrestlers of all time, and there are few wrestlers who have ever reached the heights of Ogan, who thrived in two different decades for two big name companies. His evolution to Hollywood Ogan in the 90s helped Ogan establish two iconic runs in one career that will likely never be duplicated. Long before he was a WWE, WCW, and TNA powers, Ogan started his career in the late 70s. Join us now as we look at 10 interesting facts you should know about the early career of Ogan in the late 70s. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see my videos. Hakogan started as a masked wrestler, named the Super Destroyer. The masked gimmick Hogan adopted was used by other wrestlers before him, like John Gadgin. It lasted a short time and wasn't the last time he wore a mask. As Mr. America, Hogan wore a mask during one of the lowest points of his last year's career. Hogan spent a large part of the 70s playing bass for several bands in Florida. He dropped out of the University of South Florida when he began to perform very frequently. He formed a band called Rakaz with local talents and the group became very popular in Tampa Bay region. Jack and Jared Briscoe first saw Hogan performing in the band, which led to them asking if he may ever consider becoming a wrestler. Although many wrestling personalities, both in and outside the ring, contributed to Hogan's career, the Briscoe brothers, Jack and Gerald Briscoe, convinced him to step into the ring. Hogan worked out in his spare time during the early 70s, and his physique eventually caught the ass of the future WWE Hall of Famers, Jack Briscoe, handed the Hogan his first pair of wrestling boots, and they asked the WWE Hall of Famer, Hiro Matsuda, to train the future icon. After a short time training with Hiro Matsuda, Hogan took a chance on wrestling, claiming Matsuda was too overbearing of a trainer. He managed a private club in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Ed Lacy, aka Brutus Baba Beefcake, began helping Hogan in Florida, and the two eventually ended the wrestling ring as a tag team known as the Border Brothers. The pair were KV brothers under the ring names Cherry Border and Eddie Border. Their friendship will last the rest of Hogan's career. Wrestling legend Cherry Funk introduced Hogan to Vincent J. McMahon, who was impressed by Hogan. McMahon is one who had the wrestling last name Hogan. Hogan eventually wrestled his first match in WWE in November 1979 in a winning effort against Terry Vardes. Less than a month after his debut, Hogan wrestled Ted DiBiase at Madison Square Garden. His first WWE match was against Terry Vardes, but his first ever match was against Brad the Hitman Hart. They wrestled matches in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Their long history as opponents began in a forgotten event between Georgia Championship Wrestling GCW, and National Wrestling Alliance NWA. In this era, Hogan was wrestling under the ring name Sterling Golden at GCW. They would compete again in 1984 in a tag team match in New Japan Pro Wrestling. The legendary unit of Hart and Hogan lost to Akira Maeda and Tatsumi Fujinami. Hogan started his wrestling career in the late 70s and he was already boarding in the late 70s. Hogan is one of the most famous boarding wrestlers of all time. He spent a large part of his prime wearing various bandanas to cover his boarding head. When he first arrived to WWE, Vincent J. McMahon wanted Hogan to dye his hair red. Hogan refused, claiming he was to be a blonde Irish wrestler. The look followed Hogan his entire career, although he would eventually win the WWE Championship for 1,474 days. Hogan never won a single major world title in the late 70s. He competed for New Japan Pro Wrestling World Heavyweight World Championship a few times, but he was never able to overcome legends like Harley Race. While wrestling at Continental Wrestling Association CWA, in Memphis, Hogan appeared on a local talk show where he sat next to Lou Frigno. Frigno famously played the Hulk on the television series The Incredible Hulk. The host commented on how Hogan was actually bigger than the actual Hulk. As a result, Hogan began wrestling under the ring name Terry the Hulk Border. Hogan is one of the most successful wrestlers in the business, but before the success, he almost quit wrestling. Despite a great physique and great mentors in wrestling, Hogan found himself very unhappy with the business. He had only worked as a wrestler for a short term, but was already very disheartened by the abysmal pay for the rough work he was required to perform. His hiatus from wrestling in 1978 helped Hogan rediscover his desire to perform. Still, at one point, Hogan was content being a long showman 
and stove Doe instead of a wrestler for a short time after his debut in 1977. But there you go guys, a list of 10 interesting facts you should know about the early career of Wakugan in the 70s. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell to be notified whenever I post another video. And also smash the like button. Until then, see you next time.